This is the Vivor vacuum casting machine. We're gonna run it through some tests. It comes in a big secure box like this. These metal flaps lock it into place. So you undo those and you can open it up. It's also got some screws keeping it in place. Uh-oh, that doesn't look good. They're just tongs. Sweet. Bunch of silicone rings for all different sizes. Very nice. Different size rings for different size crucibles. And a steel plate for a table. Nice. Now I've used silicone rings like this before in my other table and I've burned through every one of them. So I'm just going to have to try using a lot lower temperature as I use these. It's like a big old diving bell. Now this is acrylic. I was hoping it'd be glass but it's acrylic, so we'll see how that works. Should be fine. The sticker on here says, please add 350 milliliters of vacuum oil before starting machine. I didn't get any vacuum oil with it. Came with a little funnel, but no oil. So I don't know if it's supposed to come, but I didn't get any, so I'll have to get some. So the vacuum oil came and I put that in and it's good to go. And when you put it in, this little nut screws off here and you, it takes time between dumping it in here and seeing it on the level there. So you gotta keep your eye on the level bubble so you don't overfill it. But that's pretty straightforward. Now, it comes with an instruction manual. Make sure you actually read this because there's some very important things in there that you need to know. One thing being, don't ever turn the machine off and then shut it off before you release the vacuum. If you shut the machine off with the vacuum chamber in suction, it can suck the oil up and kind of damage your machine. So just make sure you go over that. But I think we're ready to test it. So to test it, I printed out some 3D printed jewelry and this is printed out of castable resin. So this will burn away just like wax, but it'll be a good way for me to be able to test the machine. This flask is pretty small, but for jewelry, it's sufficient. So let's get to work. So I'm going to be using the flask that came with it, which I think they said was three inches. It's a little over three inches outer diameter, but they give you the rings that you need. So that'll be that one right there. So I put the one ring on there. That'll seal the sizing ring. And then I need a gasket that will actually seal the flask. So when this goes in like so, that should be completely sealed. With this rubber stopper in there, we should actually be able to test it. So let's give it a test. And that is completely sealed. Release it. And we can shut it off. Maybe I shouldn't have both of these going at the same time. That might be a mistake because it's actually holding pressure. Uh-oh. See, I told you you should read this. It's holding a vacuum well. <laughs> there we go. Well, that definitely seals pretty well though. That's good. So let's go ahead and test this with a Water Tribe amulet. This is a model of Katara's little amulet that she would wear on Avatar The Last Airbender. So let's make one out of bronze. My soldering gun stopped working, so I guess we'll go the old-fashioned way, with a candle and a knife. Let's add a Baby Yoda, because Baby Yoda's cool. So that's a super easy sprue job. Got the amulet sprued up, and then I added a Baby Yoda, because why not? Now the sprue kind of fits in this hole a little loose. The only thing that worries me is investment can get in the tiniest little gap. And if you get little thin fins of investment, they can flake off and break off and end up in your casting. So I'm gonna melt some wax around this just so there's no gap at all. So it's not loose, so no investment can get in underneath there. And then we'll mix up the investment. One of the things you gotta do to the flask before you mix up the investment is tape up all these holes. And yes, I have done that before. It's a frantic mess. We don't want that. To tape it, I'm just gonna use some painter's tape. 
Don't be stingy on the tape. There's nothing worse than having your tape leak. Now when you pour the investment, you got a limited time before it cures. So I want to make sure everything's all set up. So I got the acrylic bell off to the side, ready to go. Once it's mixed, I'll just set it there and vacuum all the bubbles out. Make sure it fits first. No problem. Okay, let's mix it. Like so, and like so, and I turn it on. Investment table on. That draws a pretty strong vacuum. So I believe this machine has a 4.3 CFM pump. It seemed like that might be a little undersized, but it's not at all. That sucked the air out right away good strong vacuum so that's great okay before i shut the machine off release it and then shut it off very nice you might maybe technically you're not supposed to do this but i always leave a little bit shy and then top it off at the end but again a professional jeweler may say different Regardless, it's full and we'll set that off to the side to cure. I want to keep this silicone clean. I want to keep this bell clean too. So this has been sitting for two hours. Let's take the tape off. And at this point, I want to make sure there's no little in overhangs of the investment because when I slide it down into the casting chamber, I don't want to knock any of that off and have it sit there on the lip because that's going to interfere with the seal. Got to be in contact with the silicone to seal. So you can just scrape on, scrape off any overhangs like so. So now it goes into the kiln to follow the burnout schedule of the investment that you're using. I'm using UltraVest, so I'll follow that burnout schedule. So that flask has been sitting in there at 730 degrees Celsius for five hours. Everything should be burned out. It should be ready to cast but I wanna make sure I drop the temperature down. These rubber gaskets have a heat maximum. Now it says in the book, let me double check, the flash should be cast at temperatures between 700 degrees Fahrenheit and 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. It just seems way too hot for this rubber. I just feel like it's gonna burn up, but that's what it says. So I'm gonna take it to the lower end of that. 700 degrees or less, I think. So 700 degrees Fahrenheit would be what in Celsius? 700 degrees Fahrenheit is what in Celsius? 371 degrees Celsius. So we'll drop that down to 371. Tell you what, 350 is close enough. If that gasket can handle 350, then I'll bump it up next time. And for metal, I got some bronze chips from a milling project and some scrap bronze buttons. So that's what I'll melt. That's making a mess, so let's do it this way. Actually filled that right up. Uh, if you don't already know, the reason why you use a vacuum casting system is because it pulls all the bubbles, it pulls the metal into the fine detailed areas. This doesn't work with like plaster of Paris. It has to be the right type of investment. Investment is porous and it allows the air to go through it. So when you have a strong enough vacuum, the air is getting pulled out and it draws the metal in to those little spaces. So these machines serving a dual purpose of vacuuming all the bubbles out of the investment and then vacuuming the metal into the spaces, it just gives you a lot higher quality casting. People will also use centrifugal casting systems where they fling the metal in a, in a circular motion and that centrifugal force forces the metal into the voids. It forces the metal into those tiny spaces. Pretty cool, kind of scary, but pretty cool too. And then you can use gravity, but you need a high enough riser to push the metal down. 
all that heavy molten metal will force the metal into those spaces, but it takes a lot more metal. So there's lots of different ways to do it. Vacuum casting system is just a nice way to do it. All right, that's in the right temperature window. My metal is molten, so we're ready. So I'm gonna set this to casting chamber. This little nodule points to what you're looking at. I'm gonna wear my PPE. Oh my gosh. It won't go in. So the thermal expansion is so much that I can't even get it into the collar. There we go. Okay. Guess it was a little too hot still. Good vacuum. So that's drawn a good vacuum. I just want to make sure that it's solidified until I turn it off, which I'm sure it is by now. So I'll hit that vacuum release. Releases a vacuum. Then I can shut it off. So the vacuum isn't really releasing. That's not good. Now this O-ring looks like it survived. Doesn't look like it's been burned or misshapen. It held up to the heat. Perfect. Hopefully we'll get several more uses out of that. I'm sure they have a lifespan, but we'll find out, I guess, how many. I see just a little glow in that button, so it should be good to clinch. So it looks perfect. Little bit of investment coating, so let's get it cleaned off and see for sure. So in the meantime, I use the machine a few more times, one of which doing a pine cone, which I'll show you later. But I still have issues getting the flask to fit into the collar when it's so hot. It's well within the temperature ratio that it says it will work, but the thermal expansion is too much for it to fit into that collar. So that flask was well within the temperature range and it's still very hard to get it to go through that collar because it's so close to the same size that when it expands thermally, it just doesn't go in. Also, definitely works a lot better when you don't have the bell on there. Keep the bell off if you're casting. Now after doing several castings with this, the O-rings are holding up pretty well. I mean, they're not burned out at all, so that's good. My biggest complaint would be with the sizing of this ring. Now when everything's cool, this fits in there just fine, like so. But when it's all hot and expanded, it doesn't fit in there. And it's so frustrating to try to get that to go through that hole. I don't know why that's the case. Unless I should be using the next size ring, but that barely fits the seal. I mean, it does, but barely. I feel like this bigger ring is for a bigger flask. This is my four inch flask. That fits just perfect. But other than that, it works great. It pulls a vacuum super fast. I was worried that the pump would be undersized, but for the size of castings you do, it seems to be perfect. And here's our finished pieces. Now for the Katara amulet, it didn't turn out the best, but it looks like I had some investment that didn't quite get in there. I'll blame that on me. However, the Baby Yoda turned out perfect. And I tested it on some other things like this pine cone, and I have never had a pine cone turn out as well as this. It's just flawless. If you didn't know better, you'd think it was a real pine cone, but it's not. The vacuum pulls all that metal into those tiny little voids that are burned out, and that's the benefit of a vacuum casting system. I am really happy with that, and I think we're gonna be able to use this on a whole bunch of other cool projects. Overall impression, I think it's a good machine. I can't compare it to other systems because I haven't used other systems, but from what I've seen, this works quite well. Full disclosure, Vivor did send me this for a video review and they sent me a video link that you can click on below with a discount code. But I'm not trying to sell it to you, I'm just giving you my honest opinion. And I think we're gonna be able to use this for some other really cool projects. So thank you Vivor for this. Thank you guys for watching. Come on back for the next one. Bye-bye.